If you want to get the most out of Ecamm Live's latest screen share green screen feature, <laughs> I have to say that one slowly because it's such a tongue twister, uh, stick around because I've got not one, not two, not three or four, but five videos for you. And this is the first one. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec. And in this video, I'm going to be focused really on one primary feature of, uh, well, it was actually the new beta. So I did a video about this earlier today, uh, the Ecamm Live version 3.9 beta 4. But as far as I understand, we are pretty close to this actually being the final release now. So it will come to the sort of mainstream Ecamm any day now. Now, the video that I made about it, I did feature some uh, rather silly, I suppose, uh, graphics in there, but I did have a few people asking me exactly how I'd done those. Now, uh, that's the purpose of these uh, these five videos, and it's to cover those because I did use some of these techniques in making that video, uh, but it's also just because I've been waiting for this feature to come for so long and I've asked uh, about it a number of times and so have other people uh, and now it's finally here and I'm just excited to actually get stuck in and start using this because I can see that this is going to actually really make my workflow a hell of a lot easier with some of the stuff that I do with Ecamm. Uh, not actually so much on this channel, although you can bet I will be implementing <laughs> some of these little features as well into the channel, but it's more for when I'm doing things for presentations and stuff like that and then also for creating course material and so on. Uh, so it is all related to their green screen feature and it the way that you can add now green screen uh, or remove rather remove green screen from uh, screen sharing overlays. So that means that you can share applications like Keynote or like PowerPoint uh, and then do some pretty cool things with them. Uh, and so one thing that I did as a little example earlier was <laughs> if I bring up the right window, hang on, <laughs> was something like this. So uh, that looks quite simple, really. It's bringing a little bit transparent uh, type over the top and then it's zooming out and disappearing over the top of me. But the thing that's different about that than uh, how I would have had to do that before is that that is actually just all done live in, uh, in Keynote. The other thing that's very different about it is it's all been done just on the fly in Ecamm Live. There is no need for any separate software or any importing or exporting or all that nonsense. Before, if I wanted to do that, uh, you could always make uh, overlays in uh, video overlays in uh, Keynote with transparent backgrounds. So then you could use things like have moving images and things like that on the screen. The tricky one about that that I've just shown you is it's actually the the sort of holes, if you like, the words, the letters that are that are transparent, and those are moving on the screen. And that's something that you couldn't technically do in Keynote to have the the transparency move with the letters, if that makes sense. You can do the animation of the letters, no problem. You can make the background transparent, no problem. But what you couldn't do is sort of subtract the letter from the bottom, uh, the, the the background, as it was actually animating. So that is something that I previously had to do by. Uh, making the animation, exporting it, and then bring it into another program to remove the uh, the green part of the uh, the little movie file, and then import that into Ecamm Live. And then if I wanted to make any changes, it's back to the drawing board and start all over again. Whereas now the way that I can do it is I can just do it sort of on the fly in uh, PowerPoint, uh, or sorry, in uh, in Keynote. Uh, but you can do it in PowerPoint as well. But the other thing that you can then do is you can just go and edit it. So that last one said, I really love the uh, new beta or something like that. Well, if I wanted to change that, then literally I can just go and make it and change the letters to say something else, such as green screen, <laughs> screen share. So you can see what I mean. It's the letters themselves that are transparent. Uh, and then this whole thing falls away at the front as well. And it's really uh, well implemented in my view in, uh, in Ecamm Live. So that is what these five videos are about. And I'm going to show you how uh, to use it. So I'm going to come into demo mode just for a moment and show you. Uh, basically, here I am. I've got my green screen down below or rather my green presentation, because that's all it is. It's just a, a keynote presentation running in a window. Uh, and then I've got screen sharing running in my Ecamm Live as an overlay which was another feature that was added in in the uh, beta 2, I think, or maybe beta 1. I can't remember which. <laughs> there were so many good things in all of them. I can't remember which came in which. Uh, but in any case, that is what is happening. So let me show you how to basically uh, construct this. I'm just going to come into this other uh, scene here for a moment. And let me just quickly get rid of a couple of these. Uh, I did use this scene earlier for another demo. So <laughs> I'll just delete those. So now basically all I've got in this scene uh, and in fact, I tell you what, let me just back up even further. <laughs> 
let me just back up even further in case you weren't aware of these uh, extra features. I'll just tell you quickly. So what they've added into uh, the the whole beta uh, program if for this uh, this sort of version so far, beta one, two, three, and four, uh, they've added a few things which basically change the way that I will be building out scenes and things like that in Ecamm Live. The first thing is, uh, let me just show you what's in this scene. I'll just uh, take my camera out for a moment. So basically in the background, I've just got a little animated loop running and I actually got this from uh, Pexels, the website, P-E-X-E-L-S. I'll leave a link in the description. I also did a video all about Pexels actually. So I'll leave a link to that up in the top corner as well. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> that allows you to basically just add a little moving image in the background. And so we can add our camera over on the top of it. So there we go. I've just added my camera as a camera overlay. Uh, nothing new there. We could always do that. But what they did add with the camera overlays is they allowed you to basically come in and edit it. Uh, so if I come into my camera overlay, let me just hide this other one for one second. There we go. That's gone. So we've got this little pencil here where you can actually adjust the settings. And so we could always adjust the settings before here with the shape and so on. Uh, by the way, in the beta, they did also add this shape, the uh, squircle, <laughs> slightly rounded corners, but it's got a sort of uh, multiple radius corner. It's a little bit of a complicated shape, but it's just got a quite a pleasing look to it. But let me just come back to the original one for the moment. Um, but what they added was uh, corner radius. So it allows us to add on a radius to the corners. Just get the UI out of the way so that you can see what's happening. And in fact, I'll come out of screen sharing for a moment, <laughs> out of demo mode, so you can see how I'm basically just adding roundness to the corners. The other thing that they allowed you to do was basically toggle which corners you want the radius on. So you can see we've got this little sort of four-way grid here. Uh, so we can just toggle those. And so here you can see we've got square at the top, round at this bottom corner, round at this corner and square at this bottom corner. So you just toggle on which ones you want them on. This applies to uh, to image overlays and also to um, the screen sharing overlays rather uh, and to the camera overlays and to text overlays, not to image overlays. <laughs> so what they added in this um, latest beta as well was this border. So now we can just add a border and as you can see, the border is getting thicker as I move the slider and as I move the slider back, we can select. Uh, it does actually have a readout. I'm not sure if you can read that on the screen, but it tells me how many pixels. So there we go, that is uh, six pixels. Uh, you can add on however big you want the uh, the border to be around the outside. Now what that's done is it's almost negated the need for a lot of the sort of graphic overlays that certainly I used to make for my things before uh, where I had sort of like an image with a transparent hole in it and then that would go over the top of my uh, video uh, so that it looks like I was basically like this in a border. So now it still looks like I'm in a border whereas in fact I'm actually over the top of the background and it's just got a, a sort of white border around it. Now that can cause, uh, or you might think it doesn't really, but you might think that it could cause a few issues with uh, the way that, uh, certainly with the way I used to do things before. So when I had things fly into the scene, for example, uh, they would fly in sort of behind the layer, the, the top layer, which is the border. So it appears that they actually come into the scene. Um, whereas now they're, everything is just sort of quite flat. You've literally just got the border, you've got the, sorry, the background, and then you've got your camera over the top. So you wouldn't think that you'd be able to do something like this, where if I just actually activate my uh, screen sharing, that what might help, might it? <laughs> my, my green screen overlay. Uh, I'll try that one more time. So something like this, that overlay has just flown in from behind the border. It appeared to come from behind the border and then it falls out over the front of the border. Uh, see what I mean? It's like it, you would think that it's either got to be one or the other. But if you watch that again, it comes in from the side and appears that it's coming from behind the sort of colored background over here. So it looks like it's coming from behind that. But then when I exit from the scene, uh, it looks like it's falling forward over the top of it. So uh, there's a few little tricks that you can use to sort of get around that to uh, or to give that effect. Uh, and that is the sort of things that I'm going to be talking about here. But first of all, uh, or in these videos rather, but first of all, how do you actually add the screen sharing overlay? Well, let me show you. I'll come back into my demo mode. Uh, this was added in in the beta as well. So uh, in one of the one or two, I can't remember which. <laughs> so we've now got this screen sharing overlay. So you simply add this in and then it's actually defaulted to uh, the round corners. So I'll come in here. I'll just take the border off and the round corners for now. So we've got a square. So this is just as you might expect with a uh, uh, screen sharing overlay. Uh, but what you can do here is come into the pencil and I'm going to change it to my keynote. 
So now it's showing just this green uh, keynote slide. So now I could add this up into the top corner and drag it across. So we've now got basically a canvas all over my uh, scene that I can use to uh, do whatever I want on. And if I just come with to the little uh, uh, pencil icon again, when you're in screen sharing, you've also got this green screen key here. So if I click that one, then basically the green disappears. Uh, but anything else that appears on that screen would then come you know, into the scene. So that is basically how I did that last thing, uh, which was uh, something like this, wherever it's gone. <laughs> it's disappeared now. Hang on. I'll get it back. There we go, that one. <laughs> so you can see that that is basically just appearing on the screen here. Uh, and then it's just appearing on here minus the green. It's as simple as that. So for the benefit of this first video, what I thought I'd do is uh, that's how to get the actual scene in. I thought I'd go through the actual setup steps that you're going to need to do with uh, Keynote and also with uh, if you want to use PowerPoint uh, and then a few of the settings that you just need to get right from the outset. And then we'll just do a little simple animation. And then in the next videos, I'll get into doing something a little bit more complex. So uh, first of all, I'm going to come out of my uh, screen sharing and as soon as I do this or rather out of my presentation, you'll see what's happening because now that I've exited the presentation in Keynote, uh, you can see that I've still got Keynote selected as the uh, what I'm sharing the screen of. And so now you can see all of the interface except anything that's green and anything that is green down here uh, is basically uh, see through up here. So it's as simple as that. So let me just hide this again. We'll just uh, take this one out. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a completely new keynote slide. Uh, one second, there we go. So we'll just come to a new keynote slide. Uh, I'm just going to delete this text off here. We don't need that to start with. And the first thing that I always do with uh, keynote is get my sort of master slide set up. Now, in this case, we actually just want to set it as a green slide. So uh, when you've got your new um, uh, file open in keynote, if you come up to the top corner and click on format, uh, and then anywhere in the slide, if you've got nothing selected, which you won't because it will be a blank presentation, uh, just come to this one down here that says edit slide layout. Now, this is where you can basically create a whole series of templates that you might want to use for your presentation. So uh, in the future, I'll make a video to show you like various different templates you might want to have set up for different types of uh, use cases for using Keynote with um, uh, with Ecamm Live for presentations. But for the moment, I'm actually just going to delete them all because all we need is just one. <laughs> so I'm just going to start with one. We don't need all of this stuff. We don't need that one as well. Let me just choose that. So now we've just basically got a blank slide. Now the default for it is black. Um, but what you might want to do here or what you do want to do here is if you come over to the little color wheel and then you click on the color wheel and then what you want to do is select a quite a specific color of green, not too specific. It's within a range, I suppose, but I'll leave a link to, uh, or rather I'll leave the hex code <laughs> in the description because there is a specific color that is generally used for green screens, although it will work with a range of colors. But anyway, uh, this is the uh, the hex code courtesy of Doc Rock, my uh, source for a lot of technical information. <laughs> uh, he's a mine of information. So uh, that's the, uh, the color that I'm using for this. So I've set that as my background, basically, for my master slide. So if I come down to the bottom here and click done, uh, there we go. We've got a, a blank slide. This is now an actual slide. And if I was to click add slide up here uh, to create more slides, then we can just pick that one and it would just always have that green background. So we've just set that as a base because all that we're going to be doing in here is create using it for creating these uh, these uh, animations or overlays or whatever we want to call them that are going to be brought into Ecamm Live. Now, I should say that this is a little bit of a niche case. I'm not suggesting that everybody for all of your, you know, live streams and Ecamm live shows and things like that would actually use this because it is more of a sort of presentation tool. You don't necessarily want to have this running all of the time while you're just doing your general you know, YouTube live stream or something like that. However, there are specific use cases uh, where it can come in really handy. Uh, and that's the sort of things that I'm going to be talking about in this video series as well. So now that we've got our uh, basically our blank green slides, it's just a case of thinking what we want to put on there. So uh, it can be as simple as uh, in fact, let me just come and get a, uh, an image because one of the questions that I got asked was uh, how I had done something in particular, which was uh, let me just come over here a minute. 
Okay, I just paused there for a moment while I got to the right folder. <laughs> so one of the things that I got asked was, uh, in the little video that I did, uh, there was four cameras that just came dropping down and uh, with a little bit of a silly anim animation, to be honest. So um, the way that I did that was I uh, got a picture of a camera and I'll just drop it into the scene here. So this is a, one of the four cameras that is now compatible over USB uh, or one of the new uh, compatibility uh, cameras that is uh, compatible over USB with Ecamm Live and this was something that I mentioned in my previous video so I bought the image in now uh, there is actually an instant alpha uh, tool built right into uh, PowerPoint so here I've got this tool and obviously I want to get rid of the white around the outside so if I come over to uh, the format again these are basically over on this side. This is where you've got all the different panels uh, for doing various different functions and editing and things like that. So uh, over on the format, and then if I come down to uh, the image, click on image because I've got an image selected. Uh, these uh, menus, by the way, are contextual, so it will depend what you've got selected as to what shows up here. But because I have got a picture selected, then I've got this little image menu. And you can see here that I've got... Uh, instant mask which means that I could mask certain parts of the image and crop out certain things uh, or there is instant alpha so if I click on instant alpha and then move my uh, mouse over the thing you'll see that my uh, I don't know if this shows up with pro mouse actually oh yeah you can see it I've got this little box that appears uh, and this is going to be very easy to key out because it's all uh, white uh, so it's all a uniform color with nice sharp edges but basically you just click anywhere on the image uh, and then what you can see is actually uh, let me just come back and show you this again. If I click on here, you can see this area around here, uh, around the uh, the top here. It didn't actually key out. So if I click and hold, you can see that perhaps see that there are some little little bits that are not quite tight up to the edges. So basically, as you're clicking and holding, you just drag down, and it will just really tighten this image up. Uh, so that will give you a nice crisp edge. Now I'm going to release my mouse, uh, and that looks like it's got all of those little bits. And so then I'm going to click done. And there we go. We've got a nice little uh, transparent image of the camera. And then it's really just a case of adding in some sort of animation. So if I put this one over here, uh, and then let's just for the sake of it, <laughs> add one over this side as well. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll just come to the little animate panel, uh, which is where we can add animations. I've done quite a few videos actually about Keynote and how you can use it for animation. So I'm just, uh, I won't go too much into this. Uh, but basically with animation uh, for in keynote terms uh, you've basically got three ways to categorize the animation you've got build in which means that something's starting out of the out of the picture and then it's going to appear in some way or other you've got actions which are the thing is in the scene and then it's going to do something on the screen uh, but not actually leave <laughs> and then build out is the way that the item is going to disappear so for example uh, the build in let's just say we want these to build in uh, so I could come to build in. I've got them both selected and I'm going to add an effect. There are lots of different effects you can add, uh, but let's just add a drop. So you can just go down and you can preview some of these. So you can do things like this uh, or you could do things like uh, this one just appearing. Uh, but let's just do drop because that's what I did on the, uh, the first video. So those are just basically dropping down from the top. So I'm going to click on that. You can change change things like the duration of the uh, the motion and so on. So let me just do that. Uh, and then also, once you've got more than one thing and you've got things that are animating, what you're going to want to do is uh, a couple of things, really. Uh, first of all, you've got this build order down at the bottom, uh, and that's basically the order of all these animations. So each of these little stages of animation is called a build. Uh, and the other thing that you might want to do is come over to here, and then you've got this little menu up on the top left, which is the view menu. Uh, and in here, we've got the navigator open. So the navigator is where you see all your different slides. Uh, but you've also got this one, which is show object list. Now, I personally find it very useful to have this one open, especially when you start getting complex slides built up, because it allows you to see all the different objects that you've got on your screen. So here we've got two identical items, and they're both called the same because it's the same file name. But if I click on that one, I can see that that is uh, the one on the left. So let's just call that one uh, Fuji Left. <laughs> so I can rename that. There we go. Let me select it. So I'm going to rename that and then from now on I will be able to see exactly which one is which uh, and then I'll come into here and I'll call this one Fuji right. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and the benefit of doing that is whatever you call these objects in here is also, you'll notice, it's changed them in here. So it makes it very easy to understand uh, which one we're looking at. 
Now, when it comes to the build order, there are a few different things that you can do in here. Uh, so notably, it is the uh, the start time. So uh, when is, is this action going to be triggered? Uh, so the default is usually on click. That means that when you click the mouse or maybe a little uh, presentation clicker or something like that, it is going to advance to that action. Uh, so that is the sort of default behavior. Bearing in mind that this is presentation software, ultimately, it's not intended necessarily to be used for uh, you know, movie uh, motion graphics and things like that. Uh, but we can sort of get away with quite a lot with it. So I want these to drop at the same time. So rather than be happening on click, I want the first one to happen on click so that I know when it's going to happen. But for the second one, uh, what I'd actually like to happen is I want that to happen at the same time. So I'm going to click on this start and then say with build one. So you can see the builds have all got numbers. So here's number one and here's number two. So now those are both going to happen at the same time. And if I come to the preview here, it's going to show you they both drop at the same time. So that is a build in action. Uh, you can also do uh, uh, an, an action during the, uh, the uh, while the thing is on the, the, uh, the scene rather. Uh, so let's do something with these now that they're actually in position. So what I can do here is I can add an effect and let's say we want to uh, move this one so we can move it that way. So I could actually have it move uh, back up to this corner, perhaps like that. So that's showing you the starting position. And then this line is showing you where it is going to go to. You can also, by the way, you can grab this one in the middle and you could also make it go like around like that. <laughs> so that is the path that it is going to move to go to get to where you want it to go. Uh, you can all do all sorts of different paths. As soon as you start creating a path, you can make it go whichever way you want. So let's uh, leave that one like that. Meanwhile, let's have this one uh, start uh, doing something else. So you could have it maybe doing another action. Maybe you might want it to rotate something like that. So let's have that one rotate uh, by uh, 360 degrees. Uh, or whoops, one rotation might be a better way of saying that. <laughs> uh, so that's going to rotate while this one's moving. This is all totally silly and ridiculous. I'm just showing you the sorts of things that you can do with it. Let's have those two things happen together. Um, then we want to them to build out as well. So let's have this one have an effect. And let's say that that one is going to uh, burst into flames. And then let's say that this other one over here is going to go by a different way. So let's have a look at what we can do with this one. Uh, this one, we're just going to have that one as a... Uh, let's have a little look crumble let's try that one there we go like that so we've got those effects now and I'm just going to have the two build outs happen at exactly the same time as well so I'll have those happen together uh, and now I'll just run that as it is so if I just play this one now and in fact let me just play it in window I'll come back to what exactly play in window is in a moment but what you'll see is now these should appear on the screen with a bit of luck so now if I advance the slide there you go the two cameras have moved in uh, and in fact let me go full screen for this so you get the full benefit so the two cameras have moved in and now if I advance to the next part which was the move part you can see that that one spins while that one moves over to the other side of the screen uh, and then let's try the next one where one of them is going to crumble and the other one is going to burst into flames so that was all just done in a matter of moments in keynote and yes it did look pretty ridiculous didn't it so I wouldn't necessarily recommend you do professional presentations in that manner <laughs> it's just to give you a bit of an example so let me come out of here now because the one part that I didn't show you in there is, uh, although I mentioned it in my previous video, you may not have seen that one, uh, is how you actually get Keynote to play in a separate window rather than the full screen because the default in Keynote is to play in full screen. Well, the way that you do that is you come over to uh, here <laughs> and where it says play at the top, uh, you've got play slideshow, which is the default. And that's what normally happens when you press the play key. Uh, but you can also go to play slideshow in window. And when you click on that one, that's when it comes into this window form rather than a full screen. Uh, you can add this to the toolbar as well. So you can come to the toolbar up at the top and click right click and click customize. Uh, and then you'll have this play in window button that you can add to the top. So then when you are ready to play your slideshow, uh, you just get ready like that. And there it is. Uh, so let me just come out of there for a minute, go back to that slide, try it again. Uh, and then you'll see what's happening as I actually play the slideshow. It is going to appear on the screen. So there we go. We've got the two cameras moving down. Now they're moving over the screen and then now they're disappearing out. 
So that is basically an introduction to how you can use the uh, green screen function to make all sorts of animations and things like that that you uh, can create in Keynote and whatever you can imagine in Keynote actually appear in the uh, Ecamm Live itself. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it there for this one. This is just a sort of slight introduction, should I say, to the process because what we haven't co covered there is sort of more technical things that you can do and how you can use masking and things like that to make things look a lot better and a little bit more professional than that little effort of a demonstration. <laughs> so uh, I will be making these videos sort of consecutively. So um, uh, over the next you know a few days, I won't be sitting down and making it right now. I'll have a little break. <laughs> but over the next few days, I'll just release these five videos, which is how you can get the most out of this feature. If you found this useful, then uh, do let me know in the uh, comments. And in the meantime, I'll leave a link to some other Ecamm videos over on the bottom right. So have a great day and I'll see you soon.